Hey guys, it's Rainy Nights. I just finished watching War Dogs, which is a 2016 Todd Phillips film. Uh, this one has quite a few genres in it, so it is, uh, it's a little bit different. Uh, it's a dramedy, it's a thriller, it's a military film, uh, kind of a capitalistic film as well. So there's a lot of uh, different genres here. But uh, overall, I liked it a, a lot. I thought it was incredible, to be honest. Um, so I was surprised to see how low these scores were because I always, not always, but um, whenever I watch films with my family, which is the movies that I review on Saturday and Sunday specifically, are the family days. Uh, the other ones are by myself or with a friend. So this was one of those family days, so I usually look up movies just so that I don't waste my family's time uh, with bad stuff because I don't mind watching crap movies by myself, but I don't want to waste their time, right? So. I was surprised. I was like, okay, I'll take a chance on this one. And uh, it paid off. So the critics are definitely wrong about this one, this, the whole point of that spiel. So War Dogs is supposedly based off a true story. Um, and it's about two young men in their 20s who uh, are basically international arms dealers. And they're able to capitalize off of the Iraqi war uh, because they're supplying... Um, uh, American uh, soldiers with their much-needed ammo and weapons so yeah and uh, they're able to capitalize off the fortune and our two characters are very different people from each other so Jonah Hill's character is just a straight-up lying scumbag uh, he's racist he's you know he pretends to be religions he's not to make people like him he he is a very bad person but I still I still like him because it's Jonah Hill he's funny he's entertaining uh, so he's not it's not a problem that he's a terrible person, but that just is the fact of the matter is he's not a good person And then the other guy is uh, Miles Teller's character who is um, He is basically uh, a massage therapist for rich people and uh, He's about to start a family with Ana de Armas's character is who is um, and he's very strapped for money and he wants to provide a better life for his family and all that so he it's this traditional tale of you start out with good intentions and then it spirals out of control and that's sort of where the film's direction goes so yeah he uh, lies to his partner because I don't think they're married but he is she is his girlfriend at least so actually maybe they're married I don't even know um, but uh, yeah because we never learned that but basically it's about one guy who reluctantly joins the arms race the arms trading business uh, with his, you know, high school best friend who is already involved in it, and they have very different moral perspectives on this. Uh, so they make for an interesting duo. So let's start off with uh, the positives. So because there's actually only one negative, so I will save that one for after. So the positives are: it's a very gripping thriller. It's you're never bored. You're always interested. You're always engaged. It's super intriguing, one of a kind story that I've never seen before. And it's supposedly based off true stuff, which is, just makes, that's just cherry on the cake at that point. So, or, uh, yeah, so in general, it's just a very interesting, highly entertaining thriller film that is mature, doesn't mind getting edgy when it has to. Um, and yeah, it, I really, really recommend it. And while it does not have action basically at all, uh, it makes up for that. And there's, you don't, you won't even be missing the action just because of how, uh, you know, just how thrilling it is. Like it's it's a very tense and uh, it's a very tense and engaging film that you don't want to end, and you're always wanting more and more from it. So yeah, it's one of those. It's not exactly a slow burn film, but it's it's basically it's like a better version of a slow burn film because I usually don't like slow burns. Like I can I can think of a few slow burns that I like. I like Midsummer. I think that's a good slow burn. But this is like a slow burn, but without actually being slow. So you're kind of getting the best of both worlds here. You're getting the effect and impact of a typical slow burn, but it's not actually slow, so it's still fast-paced and engaging and intriguing. So in general, it's very good. Also, it is a very funny movie as well. Uh, it's by no means as comedy its first or even second genre, but uh, it is still has a joke or two in there that are pretty funny. Um, I felt like the, the joke count was low, but they were all executed well, and they all will get reactions out of you. So it was basically a 100% success rate with the jokes that they do tell, even though there's less of them. So yeah. Uh, also Jonah Hill, I know a lot of people don't like Jonah Hill, but I, I don't know. I don't, re I don't typically care about the real life people behind these, 
these actors, right? I, I just typically just start, I just like their careers and stuff. Um, so I don't know a lot of, I know people don't like Jonah Hill is what I'm saying, but as an actor, I think he's an excellent actor and I would go as far as saying this is his best role he's ever done in his career. And I've seen practically every major movie that he's ever done. So I think he's incredible in this. Bradley Cooper also reunites with Todd Phillips and he is also excellent in this. So there's a lot of reasons to like this one. As for the one single negative, and they do kind of try to fix this, but ultimately I don't think it's entirely fixed or entirely executed perfectly. So this is one of those movies that should be a 10 out of 10, but it has a fatal flaw that prevents it. So I, there's a few of those movies I can think of. It's, it's not that uncommon of a thing, especially for... So yeah, the, the score for this movie is going to be a 9 out of 10 from me, and it's because of this one fatal flaw. So the fatal flaw for this movie is the character development of uh, David who is Miles Teller's character. The reason it's an issue is because I felt that uh, he was acting out of character several times just so that the movie could extend the drama and extend the runtime. So this is very much a family man who came from a lower class uh, income and background. So once he makes it, uh, you would think he would go back to his insanely hot wife, by the way, if it is his wife, Anna de Armas, holy crap. Uh, so you would think he would go back to his family life and be done with it. But instead he escalates, gets greedy, and it just felt very odd and out of character to me. I personally don't believe he would do the things that he's doing in this film. I think it's basically just written in a forced manner that he's do, he's basically doing things that he, he shouldn't be doing, making choices he shouldn't be making. For example, he leaves his partner who's just given birth um, <clears throat> to go to Albania for four weeks while his business partner just sits back in Las Vegas getting prostitutes and stuff. It, it, he does not strike me as the kind of guy to do that at all. So I did not believe a lot of the choices he was making in this film, and I felt they were basically forcing his hand and making him his character do things that he wouldn't normally do for the sake of additional drama and uh, to extend the runtime. And they do eventually kind of try to solve this by having him realize his mistakes and that, you know, he doesn't need all the money in the world and he just needs a family to be happy and all that. But then the film screws it up at the very end. So literally the very last scene of this film is one of the worst scenes in the movie. Um, and the reason for that is be it's... It actually kind of annoyed me just a little bit, just because I thought the movie was so excellent otherwise. The reason it's a problem is because there's this very, um, there's this very much a background subplot about this Albanian taxi driver who goes missing. And it's kind of a subplot that you'll blink and you'll miss it. It's not like a huge deal or anything, but he will occasionally come up every now and then and uh, Miles the Teller just keeps asking, okay, what happened to my driver? You know, the wife came to him and asked, you know, what happened to him and all that. And uh, I felt like this was, again, a moral... This is something that he wouldn't do. So the very last scene of the film... I don't think it's that much of a spoiler, so I'm just going to tell you it. The very last scene of the film, Miles Teller goes up to Bradley Cooper and asks him, hey, what happened to my driver? Uh, like, you know, was he killed? What happened to him? And Bradley Cooper essentially gives him a briefcase of money and says, no more questions. And then the credits start running. So the reason that's a problem is because Miles Teller's character has already went full circle moral compass wise by that point. He went through at the beginning, beginning of the film, humble masseuse worker for annoying rich people. Then he goes through the whole Iraqi war, profit, war profiteering and arms race illegal stuff, doing crazy over the top things, escalation. And then at the end of the film he goes back to his humble thing, he's like, okay I don't need all the millions of dollars in the world, I just want to be with my family. And then he goes backwards again and is like, okay, I'll just take the money and, you know, not let my morals get in the way of the fact that y my business partner uh, kidnapped and murdered, you know, this taxi driver of mine who the, the uh, specific woman at the warehouse wanted to find. That was honestly one of the most bizarre parts of the movie was the whole disappear disappearing taxi driver guy. But since it's there, I'm going to have to address it. So I think it's very odd that he is willing to shut his mouth and accept the money and run and uh, get out of the life for good. I think he needs, 
I think his moral compass and conscious. Especially, let's just say, for example, let's say he asked his wife what, or his partner. So if he asked Anna de Armas, you know, or told her about any of this, because it's a recurring theme throughout the movie, is that he keeps lying to her. And this pisses her off a lot, understandably. So he, this is yet another thing that he's going to keep from her. I highly doubt he's ever going to tell her about this taxi driver that has gone missing. So it, it just bothers me because it comes out left field and kind of ruins an otherwise pretty strong ending. So I'm going to give War Dogs a 9 out of 10. I highly recommend it. It is a mature, gripping thriller with some jokes and some great performances. So definitely recommend this one.